mother. Matthew. <laughs> and I'd like to present you with a step to Christ. A little girl. And where are you from? <laughs> All righty. Thank you for visiting with us today. I have a few announcements. Uh, the announcement is Wednesday night prayer meeting, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, the topic is Steps to Christ, the book that we have here. And the chapter that we're covering is What to Do with Doubt. And if you want more information, speak with Keith Allen, my husband here. And we have freestyle on Freestyle Fridays on Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And the topic is Joseph. And so you would contact Cindy Patterson if you wanted to get any more information on that. And it's covered, we're covering it on Zoom. And so if you need the Zoom code, you would speak to Cindy. Um, we have Sabbath school every Sabbath at 9 a.m and then divine worship at 11 a.m. After church, we're handing out Bible tracts, and it's just for a few minutes. Um, 1 Corinthians 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And if you'd like to go out after church for 15 minutes, contact Keith. On Wednesday, Wednesdays, we have a food giveaway from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And if you need more information, contact our pastor, Pastor Ruby here. And the prayer room is immediately after church. It is on the right, my right hand side, your left, or probably your right as you're going out. We'll pray if you have any prayers that you want to put before the Lord, or concerns you want to put before the Lord, we will pray with you after service. Um, the Sabbath activities is the, uh, on the first week, we have Youth Sabbath, the second week, uh, Outreach, the third week of the month, Family Sabbath, the fourth, the fourth week is Outreach, the fifth week, if there is a fifth week, would be Feed the Homeless, and you can talk with Brother Keith for more information. And then we have a leadership class. It's a wonderful class. It teaches you to be a leader in the church or anywhere. You don't have to be a leader in order to take this class. Um, it's a small fee, but you will receive a certificate from Andrews University. Also, we have uh, no, no, Children's Choir today at 5. Yeah, five o'clock. At five o'clock. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. okay, so choir for both. Okay, so choir for both, children and adults. Today at five? Today for both. Okay. And then also we have hand sanitizers available. Pastor William? Uh, we're in the uh, community service. In the community by service? The window, by the side of the, mm -hmm. of the building in the first. Mm -hmm. There are three windows. Oh, on the back. On the back. Over in the community right. service. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. All right. How are those? How many of us is happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. 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 We came to praise the Lord and we came to hear his word. Because Jesus is the Word. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? In verse 14, it says, and this Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And so, therefore, we need to hear from Jesus today. How many of us have our Bibles? Amen. Let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 1. And when you get there, say amen. amen. 
Amen. And I think uh, it, what, it is the tradition of the church to stand when we uh, read the word of God. So all those who are able to stand, let us stand for the word of God. Let us be like Daniel's and Joseph's. And as we can stand in here, we can stand out there. Amen. Amen. Stand for the word of God. It says in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and to honoring of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, now is the time for us uh, to uh, pray before the Lord. So uh, intercessory prayer. So if you're able to, uh, please kneel. Otherwise, let us all bow before the Lord. Heavenly Father, here we are once again in your house. Thank you, Father, that uh, we're able to come here and be here to worship you in freedom and in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, there are many things uh, to pray about. We pray first and foremost uh, for the leaders of our church. We pray that you continue to lead, guide, and direct them in the right path, in a path that would lead us all into righteousness and on the way to heaven. Father, I pray for the ministries in this church, uh, whatever ministry, men's ministry, women's ministry, the homeless ministry, whatever ministry, as long as they're doing your work, Father, I pray that your hand would be upon upon it, that you would bless it. Father, I pray for the youth and the young children. There are many things in this world that try to draw their attention away from you. Father, it is, it is so much more so than when I was a youth. And Father, uh, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would protect their eyes, their ears, their hearts, Father God. Father, we pray for those who are sick, those who may be dying, those who are hungry, not only physically hungry, but spiritually hungry. We pray that those who seek you, Father God, would find you. Father, um, I pray for those who um, are homeless, who don't have a home. I pray that you would uh, guide those of us who, who minister or anyone else, guide them to the homeless that they would help them, help them find a place to live. Father God, those who uh, don't have work, I pray that you help them find work. Find work that is meaningful to them and that would show their true worth and value. However, as we learn in, in Sabbath school, our true worth and value come from you, not from those in this world. And Father, help us to draw closer together as brothers and sisters, that we could uh, love one another and help provide for one another uh, spiritually, Father God, whatever means. And Father, we just thank you again for this wonderful day that you've given us, the Sabbath day, your day. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. So I have a scripture that I want to read. And it's found in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 19 through 21. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And God's word says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. 
I pray that nobody's ever had their house broken into. Mm. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Now here's the good part. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. So now is the time um, for us to um, give back to the Lord. Okay, he's done so much. There's another scripture. He's the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. Not a thousand cattle on a hill, but cattle on a thousand hills, right? Amen. Okay. He owns everything. Okay, so um, this this building, um, yes, men and women put this built this building. Okay, and put things together, but who made the men and women? Amen. Right? Who gave them that ability to do that? So here we are in this church, nice and comfortable, uh, it, fairly cool in here right now. It gets hot up here. Okay, right, brother? Yeah. Okay. But anyway, uh, let's give back to God, okay? He's given us so much, maybe not in, in uh, financially or physically, but spiritually. Look, he, he gave the most important gift of all, Jesus, right? We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, um, brother, if you would uh, stand, and then let us go ahead and... Pray for the uh, pray for the tithes and offerings, Father. Um, thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you've given us. You provide for us. Your people will not go begging bread. That's what your word says, Father. Um, we just lay our tithes and offerings, our gifts, at your feet. And we ask that the gifts, the tithes, the offerings that we give will be used to spread the good news to others. There are many others who don't know you, Lord, that help us. And we can help in this way. We can help financially, Father God. Whatever the gift, if we've given it with our heart, given it with a good heart, Father God, you will take it and use it for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. so good. Amen. Amen. God is what? Good. God is good. Yes. All the time? All the time. God is good. Nice to see you, everybody. Nice to see uh, Sadie's family. God bless you. And uh, we're going through because God is with us. 
No matter if there is a pandemic, no matter what is going on in the society, God is always with us. And he will protect us from everything. Um, so let me let me say to you that we have community service and God has been blessing us. We, we, when we start the community uh, service, we thought that we were going to give only on Wednesday. But God has given us so much food that we're giving Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> so today, if you want to take a box of food, it's available. Um, we, we receive approximately $10,000 of hand sanitizer. Wow. We have a lot of hand sanitizer, so you can take home. You know, for those people who like to use hand sanitizer, so it's available. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, he's blessing us. And uh, every Wednesday, we, we are serving around 65, 75 people. And they are from, from the community. So we are planning on September to change the hours of, of giving the food. We give it from 4 to 6. But we are planning to change it so we can start giving them Bible studies, okay? And we have a lot of English only. So this section of the English section, we have to get in action to give Bible studies every Amen. Wednesday. And we probably have a, a group in one side of the, of the cafeteria in Spanish and the other side in English. So we can start preaching to them. And you know, eventually God will add to the church those mm -hmm. who will Amen. be saved. Amen. That's what the Bible text says in, in the book of Acts. God is the one who adds to the church who's going to be saved. So, and we're praying that the rest of the congregation comes back to the temple, come back to church, and start worshiping with us. All right? So we're praying for that. All right. Let's go to the Word of God. Ready? Let's open the Bible to 1 Timothy. Uh, chapter 1. Mm -hmm. There. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Savior, and of Christ Jesus our hope. I love this Bible text. Because the Apostle Paul, he begins his letter to this uh, young Apostle Timothy, saying that Jesus Christ is our hope. And if there is anything that humanity needs, it's hope. Do you agree with me? Amen. Do you agree with me? What we need? We need hope. Because without hope, there is no there is no final destination. But with hope, we have uh, an opportunity to go to heaven. Every human being has the opportunity to go to heaven. Let me start with this illustration. A child went to see his father and presenting himself before him with great serenity, he said, Dad, is Satan bigger than me? Yes, my son, said the father. Is he bigger than you, Dad? Yes, my son, he is bigger than me. The boy was very surprised, but he thought again and said, is he greater than Jesus? No, my son, answered the father. Jesus is greater than he is. Mm. The little boy is up. Is up? Yeah. Okay, so. Hello, hello. Okay. Now? Now you can hear it better? Oh, yeah. okay, there you go. All right. Now I can say it a more louder. Jesus is greater than he is. Amen. The little boy, when they parted, said, smiling, then I'm not afraid of him. See, 
we as children of God, we need not to be afraid of Satan. Because Satan has been destroyed in Calvary. Satan has, you know, his power, his, 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 his smear, his, the way he, he knows how to control the mind of the human being, it has been limited now by Jesus Christ dying in the cross of Calvary. Mm. Amen? Amen? So that's why this little boy, when he, when he heard his father saying that Jesus is greater than him, he says, I'm not afraid of anything. Mm. Now, the question is, why is Jesus specifically, specifically our hope? Mm. You know, we have to ask that question, why he is our hope? Because the Apostle Paul presents Jesus Christ as our hope. So why? Why did Apostle Paul start his letter saying to Timothy, hey, listen to me. You know, God is our Savior. But Jesus is our hope. Mm. Okay, let's go into it. Jesus is our hope because, listen to this, because he strengthens believers. You know, sometimes Christians, when we see Christians with little faith, <laughs> we see Christians crying all the time. We see Christians that they doubt about the word of God. But when you come to Jesus Christ, when you come to this person that God sent to this planet Earth, he has the ability to give you strength. He has the ability to grow your faith. He has the ability to say to you, you can be a victorious person. Amen. Amen. That's the Jesus we have. Mm -hmm. That's the Jesus I believe. I believe that he is in control. He has everything in his hand. So, the other reason he is our hope is because he appoints them for service. Who appoints you to service? Jesus. 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 It's not the church. Sometimes we think that the church, ah, the church give me this position. Ah, the church elected me for this position. No. It's Jesus who elect you to be part of his service. It's Jesus who appointed the Apostle Paul. It's Jesus who appointed his partner Barnabas. It's Jesus who called Simon Peter. It's Jesus who elect a person to be in his service. It's not wonderful. That's why we have to be happy. We have to be, you know, very enthusiastic of saying that I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. But sometimes people are, you know, I cannot do it. <laughs> oh, I don't have the power right now. No! Jesus Christ is with us. And about all, he gives mercy. Listen to that. What he gives? Mercy. 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 A overflow with grace. So we're sinners. That's the Jesus I believe. That's the Jesus that I found in the Bible. The Jesus that had mercy on me, a sinner. And he overflowed with grace to me. So what's the resulting, what's the result of everything that Jesus does? Eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Eternal life. So when I believe in Jesus Christ, so when Jesus is the center of my life, the Bible tells me that I have eternal life right now. Not in the future. Because sometimes, you know, Christians think, ah, when Jesus comes, I will have eternal life. No! Right now, when we are with Jesus Christ, we begin eternal life. Amen. Because he says, not even if death gets to you, I am the resurrection. Yes. You will come to life. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So, Jesus is our hope. Let's read verses 12, 13, 14, and 15 of this 
chapter 1 of Timothy. Listen what the Apostle Paul wrote, wrote right here. I thank him who has given me a strength. What the Apostle Paul said? Who gave a strength to Paul, at the Apostle Paul? Jesus. Jesus. Not Simon Peter. Remember when, when, when he confronted Simon because Simon was acting weird? <laughs> Simon was like, you know, I don't want to be with the Gentiles. I just want to be with the Jews. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Paul came to him and said, you are, going, you are being hypocrite right now. Mm -hmm. you know, get in your senses. And, and so, but he right here, the Apostle Paul says, I thank him who has given me a strength. Christ Jesus our Lord because he judged me faithful. How huh? Jesus judged the apostle Paul? Faithful. faithful. Brothers and sisters, if there is one thing that we need to be is faithful to him. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. We need to be faithful to Jesus Christ no matter what is happening. No, no matter... Not even pandemic has to stop us to be faithful to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because he is with us. So the Apostle Paul says, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. So when you're faithful with Jesus, he appoints you to his service. When you're not loyal to him, when you're not faithful to him, He's going to put you aside. Mm. He's not going to be begging you. Jesus doesn't beg. Mm. We pastors sometimes <laughs> behind members of the church begging, please accept the position. Please do this. Please do that. You know? And, and I think we pastors, we do it because of mercy. <laughs> but sometimes I say, I'm not going to be begging no more. But Jesus doesn't beg. Jesus appoints you. Remember with Moses, when he called Moses? Moses was, you know, oh no, Lord, I cannot do it. I cannot go down to Egypt. Oh, please send somebody else. And God got mad with Moses. And God said, you will go because I have appointed you. And because you are very, you know, like, uh, how do you say it? <laughs> Because I'll give you your brother Aaron, and he will be with you. So he gives us a partner to do the work of God. When we feel that we cannot do the service that God has called us, he always puts somebody else to be with us so we can, you know, be motivated and do the work of Jesus Christ. So let's continue. Verse 13. So formerly I was blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I have acted ignor ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflow for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Listen, this, this Bible text explain that the Apostle Paul had three things that it was not in his favor. He was a blasphemer. Mm. He was a persecutor. Mm. And he was an opponent of the work of Jesus Christ. But he explained, I was doing that because I was, you know, misunderstanding the calling of God. So he was doing that in ignorance. But there is sometimes, you know, in the church, people who blaspheme knowing what they do. Or sometimes we have people in the church who persecute others knowing what they're doing. Not in ignorance. May God have mercy on them. We, 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 we have to be you know, anointed with the Holy Spirit and respect people and help people to get out from darkness. Mm -hmm. 
Help people to be more closer to Jesus Christ. Thus our calling. Thus the, 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 the work that Jesus Christ has called us to do. Amen. Now, let's read verse 15. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. And listen what Apostle Paul is going to say. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. Mm. Wow. See, Jesus Christ came to save me. Mm -hmm. This person preaching to you right now the word of sin, he came to save me first. And then you say, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the word of sin. Mm -hmm. You understand what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ looked at me and he said, Rudy Sanders needs to be saved. And he did it for me. And that's why I'm grateful to him. That's why I'm loyal to him. I'm faithful to that Jesus because he has saved me from my sins. Wow, glory to his name. Amen. Then he said in verse 16, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. So Jesus Christ came to save me, so now I can be a demonstration to the world that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You got it? No message? Mm -hmm. See, we have to be a testimony, a living testimony about what Jesus is doing in my life, a living testimony about what Jesus can do in another person. So we have to testify about Jesus. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let's get up. Let's open our mouths and talk to the community that Jesus Christ is our hope. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It makes sense what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Because Jesus is coming soon. Whether we are ready or not, Jesus is coming. Hmm. But Jesus want to save people. So Jesus is the victorious mediator between God and human beings. Hmm. Having given himself as a ransom. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Listen what the Apostle Paul says right here. Uh, chapter 2, verse 5, and verse 6. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. See, Jesus, he is the only mediator between God and man. Mm -hmm. So that's why we as Seventh-day Adventists, we have, you know, the knowledge that you don't have to come to me and, 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 and throw all your mess in my face. No, go to Jesus. Because Jesus will take all your mess to the mercy throne. And, you know, be your mediator between God. Wow, that's what Jesus will have. So, Christ came to save sinners. Being merciful, he gives hope. What he do is to give hope. There is hope for every person in this planet Earth. Well, I believe that every person in the planet is saved by way. The only problem is that the majority, they don't know. They don't know that they are already saved. Because when Jesus Christ died in the cross, he saved the whole humanity. 
The only problem with human beings is that they are so hard to accept that salvation. Mm. Even us, sometimes we doubt about the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. Mm. And we step back. You know? And instead of going forward, we go back. <laughs> and start doubting about Jesus Christ, what, what he can do. Mm. So, the God that Paul had lies is a merciful God. Is a savior God. Hope of the world and forgiving. That's the God that the Apostle Paul presents to Timothy in his first letter. God is savior before judge. You get that? Amen. God is in the business of saving people. Not in judging people. Amen. Sometimes we as a persons or as a church, we get in the, in the business of judging people. Ah, look at that person, how he dressed. Oh, look at that people, how he talk or how he act. And we're judging. Mm. But God is not in that business. If the business of God is to save people. And his judgment is on the end. When there will be no more mediator between God and me. Wow. So right now, we just we need to join forces with God. We need to join forces with God to save people. Because we are already saved in Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. 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 It makes sense? Amen. It makes sense? Okay. I hope it's making sense what I'm saying. Because I get more on fire when I speak in the language of heaven. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> okay? All right. Note, note this. The expression, God our Savior, appeared five times in the pastoral letters. Let's, 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 let's read chapter 2 verse 3 listen what it says right there that's first timothy chapter 2 verse 3 this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of god our savior see what the bible repeat in this bible says in, in chapter 1 Verse 1, he said, God our Savior. Mm -hmm. And now he is repeating again in chapter 2, verse 3, that is good. God is good because he is our Savior. Mm -hmm. Then let's go to Titus. I say it right, Titus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you for helping. <laughs> Titus chapter uh, 1, verse 3. Look what the Pastor Paul said to his friend Titus. Uh, in at the proper time, manifested in his word through the preaching with, with which. I have been instructed by the command of God our Savior. So the Apostle Paul receiving order, he was entrusted to preach the gospel not by a man, but by God. See, God sent the Apostle Paul to preach. See, God has sent me to preach. God has sent Brother King when he's preaching the word over here, when Brother, when Brother Peter Patterson is preaching, or any one of you stands in this pulpit, God is the one who sent you to preach. Amen. So, because he said that he is our Savior. Now, chapter 2, verse 10 of Titus, right there. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 10. The Apostle Paul wrote, Not 
in theory, I don't know if I read it right. No? Pelperi? Pelperi. Thank you. Pelperi. But showing all good faith so that in everything that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. See, the Bible presents to us his doctrine. We don't have a doctrine made by man. God wrote it. Amen. And God is our Savior. Amen. Wow, that's powerful. So let's go now to chapter um, 3, verse 4. Right there in the same book of uh, Titus. Uh, chapter 3, verse 4. But when the goodness and loving kindness of, of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of, re of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. See, God our Savior not only gave Jesus Christ, He also gave His Holy Spirit so we can every day renew our lives. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is our hope. Amen. Amen. Wow. Now let's go to Jude, verse 25, verse 25, you only have one chapter, verse 25 says, let me get it there, okay, you ready? Amen. Jude says right here, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, and now, and forever. Amen. Amen. See? So the Apostle Paul, the main point is that God, the Father, is our Savior. John chapter 3, verse 16 is the, 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 the verse that has been has been universe uh, it's in the whole universe yes. you know for God loved the world that he gave you know, his God only begotten son. son see God is the one who was interested in saving human beings so he gave Jesus to us. Mm -hmm. And now the apostle says, Wow, if God gave Jesus to us, then he is our hope. We have Jesus to fix the problem of human beings. Mm -hmm. So we have to come to Jesus always. Mm -hmm. Because he is willing to help us. So there is one more one text I want to share with you. This is Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 47. Look what the mother of Jesus says right here. Savior. Amen. And Hallelujah. God the Father 
is in the business of saving people. Jesus is in the business of saving people. The Holy Spirit is in the business of saving people. And we have the whole universe interested in planet Earth because he want to take us out of this mess. Amen. 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 So let's be faithful to Jesus Christ. Allow him to anoint us with his Holy Spirit and allow him to appoint us to his service. And let's serve Jesus Christ. Let's do what he's asking to do. And what he's asking to do? Preach that there is salvation. Mm. We have to preach yes. that we have salvation. We have to have faith that we are ready Say, and we just need to be ready to testify and Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Amen. May God bless you. See you next month. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to this earth. Although he was sitting in the throne, as a king, he stand up and he left heaven to come to this dark world, world full of sins. And every human being had gone apart from God, but he came because he had mercy for us. And he went all the way to Via Dolorosa to Mount Calvary. And right there he extended his hands and was nailed to the cross just to save me. So may the blood of Jesus Christ be poured over my soul so I can be clean of everything that is bad in my life. So the the blood of Jesus Christ can bring us peace with you, O oh God, our, our Savior. Thank you for saving us. We want to walk with Jesus. Give us the strength. Give us your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. 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 May God bless you in the rest of the Sabbath. Amen. You too. Thank you.
let us bow and pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you for the words that you have um, spoken through our dear pastor, Rudy. Um, and we just ask that you would help us to understand the hope that we have within us and that we can share that hope with meekness and fear. Lord, we just thank you for giving us eternity right now and help us to live into that eternity in Jesus' holy and wonderful name. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everyone.